Hey everybody, John Craig here with Performance West Tennis. In today's lesson, we're gonna cover the serve. And if you're a beginning player or an intermediate player who's struggling to really develop a professional quality serve, today's lesson is gonna present drills, exercises, progressions, and concepts that are gonna help you develop the serve so that you can play at higher, higher levels and really achieve your full potential on the tennis court. Before we dive into today's lesson, I just wanna mention that in all my years of coaching tennis, which is now over 40, I've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of players, and it's very difficult to transition from um, habits and, and muscle memories that we develop on the serve as a beginner into an advanced player. It's probably the biggest thing that holds players back from becoming the best that you can be. So my advice is to you know, take time off from actually competing because it's very difficult to compete and not play with the habits that you bring to the court. And if you're trying to make substantial changes in your serve in particular, in particular, you really need to take time off to really work on the skills because they, your, your match play will just simply interfere with your progress and you will just delay it and delay it. So, you know, it's difficult to make changes, but we're gonna give you drills, exercises, and concepts that are gonna help you make those changes, but commit to taking some time away and really work on these skills before you go back to the court so that you replace the old muscle memory with the new. And of course, first and foremost, most players that are playing at a low intermediate or beginner level are serving with what would be considered a forehand grip, where the palm of the hand is on the back of the handle, much like we would hit a forehand. And this seems to be intuitively to make sense because it places the racket face in line with the ball and towards the target it makes hitting towards the target very comfortable and very natural. So for a beginning player, you can get your serve in the box right away. But you soon find out that it's very limiting in its performance. So we know that that's not really going to work. But the big problem is, is that if you're playing for a period of time and you keep serving this way, you're just developing muscle memory that's very difficult to unravel and replace. So just realize that the more you serve with the forehand grip and swing forward with your strings facing your target down here in this area, you can get the ball in the box and have a ton of fun. But if you're looking to be a competitive player at a higher level, this is going to be very, very limiting. So we've got to get off of the forehand grip and we've got to move to the continental. So to really develop a high performance serve and achieve your full serving potential, you've got to get into the continental grip. So the continental grip can be found by holding the racket straight out in front with your non-dominant hand and then putting your playing hand right on top. And what that creates is a straight line from the shoulder to the tip of the racket. Now initially, this does not make sense because it feels as though you're gonna hit the ball with the edge of your racket. But we're gonna go through the concepts here and show you how this grip actually optimizes your serving performance. Because you gotta get this grip and you gotta really commit to it and stick to it. Now, when you start with this grip, it's definitely not gonna work because it's, it's gonna, you're not gonna hit the ball square and you're gonna be erratic and, and make mistakes and the ball's gonna fly for a right hander, it's gonna fly pretty much to the left most of the time. But again, what you're gonna do is you're gonna abandon playing competitive matches that you're trying to win and spend time working on the concept to develop the right idea, okay? So really get in your head right here that you're gonna use this grip. Now, the grip and the stance also have to match. So if you've been playing with a forehand grip, more than likely you've been in inclined to face your target and, and really be this way. And you can see that I'm not getting any shoulder rotation. All I'm basically doing is swinging from my elbow. I can hit the ball fairly firm because my racket's moving squarely on the ball and I can make it pop through the strings, okay? But I can't really generate any power beyond that. It's very, very limiting. So once you get the continental grip, you're going to see how you, it activates with the right information. You can activate a full range of motion and really get a lot of power on your serve. Now, once you begin with the continental grip, you're going to need to change your stance to make the grip work and make it comfortable. So now we're going to get into a position where our stance is more sideways or perpendicular to our target line. So I'm going to set up so that my feet are about hip width apart and my back foot is behind my front foot. I don't want to be inclined to face the net, I want to be in more sideways. So I've got my continental grip and I'm more sideways to my target line. And this is the position you have to really start in, very similar to this with the continental grip. Otherwise it won't work, okay? You cannot stand facing the net and use a continental grip because you're, you're naturally going to hit the ball well to the left. So you've got to get your stance here, nice and sideways, and get used to being in this position, okay? 
And then what you want to do is you want to set up and actually start your serve here and get into the habit of having a nice routine where you're bouncing the ball and you start to feel very comfortable in this position, okay? Very, very important that your grip and your stance match each other. So once you have a continental grip, you can actually activate a motion that is very much like throwing a ball. And as an example, if I had the forehand grip and I was, and I was throwing a ball, I would just stand facing my target where I want the ball to go, and I would just be throwing from the forearm. I'd have no rotational action in the body, and the upper arm would be very stagnant and stationary, and I'd just be throwing like that. So you can see how limiting that is, okay? But once you have the continental grip, you can really activate a full range of motion, and you're gonna find out conceptually how that really develops a lot of power in your motion. It makes it easy to create easy power on your serve. So what the best thing you can do at this point in time is learn how to throw the ball well, if you don't know how to, and really try to feed the serving idea and the throwing idea together. Get them to blend together. So when I'm serving, I feel like I'm throwing a ball overhead. So most great servers can throw the ball beautifully, and baseball pitchers in particular make really good servers because they've got that nice action over the top. So get out and practice your throwing motion. Now, when you're throwing, what I want you to do is make sure you point your elbow to the back fence. And now you're in a position where you're sideways to your target. I make a nice L with my arm here, and I'm gonna push and rotate around, and then I'm gonna lead with my elbow, and the hand is gonna lag behind, and then come over the elbow and extend and release, and release. And that is the motion that you're trying to develop so that you can use the continental grip on your serve. And what happens in slow motion when I'm doing this is I'm starting and my palm is facing the side fence. And as I come around, my palm is literally facing my ear and then it faces forward and then it literally faces off to the side. And what I just demonstrated here is what's called long axis rotation or pronation. And this is the component that makes the continental grip make sense. So once you understand how the rotation occurs here as you get to the top, and you get a lot of power through the whole arm rotating, then you go, oh, light bulb goes off. Continental grip now makes sense. Because if I do this motion with a forehand grip, the ball is gonna go off to the right. But you're trying to get this active extension and rotation through the ball. And I've, on, on this channel here, I've got done several videos where I go through how to develop this skill, but I'm gonna do it again here really quickly with you to help you, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do palm to palm. So palm to palm is I put the palm of my left hand up in the air nice and high, up near my, where my hand would be on contact, for example, and I'm gonna have my palm face my ear, and I'm gonna come right at that hand like a karate chop, but as I get there, I'm gonna rotate it out so my palm finishes facing the right, okay? And I'm rotating as I'm coming in. I'm coming up, extending, and rotating and slapping or snapping through. Next step, put the elbow back again towards the back fence, and now my palm is facing the side fence to the right. As it comes around, my palm is facing my ear, and now it's facing forward, and now it's facing side. So side, ear, forward, side. Side, ear, forward, side. And that is the magical movement that allows the continental grip and the motion to come to life, and you have to get that in there. Once you've done that, then you can just throw a ball again. I'm gonna start throwing a ball, my palm is facing the side, it's gonna come through ear forward throw, and you can see my palm is facing off to the right again. And I would practice that a lot until that becomes very comfortable, and you feel like that's really natural for you to do. Then, you can pick up your racket and get in the same position. Palm is facing the side, I get a continental grip, here I am, and I'm gonna go slow motion, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go palm side, ear, forward, side. And you can go slowly and add a little bit more speed every time, but when you get to the top, you want the racket to rotate through and then come down. And that is the magical movement that most players struggle to get because we're inclined to think we wanna swing forward towards our target. And all we do there is swing with the upper arm stationary and the lower arm kind of swinging towards the target, but very, very limiting. So once we get here and we come up and rotate the whole core around, throw that racket up 
to the contact and rotate through, you will generate tremendous racketed speed with very, very little effort and not a lot of arm speed. So great servers get a lot of racketed speed with what appears to be a very easy motion. And that's what you're trying to learn as you practice these movements. When you're practicing this motion, this new movement, really go slow and feel it and get used to it. And what I want you to really feel here is that the racket head moves from behind the hand, over the top of the hand, and past the hand before the arm comes down. And I really want you to exaggerate the feeling of that. You won't be able to simulate that exactly when you're hitting the ball, but the more you feel as though the racket head moves from behind, over the top, and then your arm comes down, the more you're going to activate the long axis rotation and get racket head speed without a lot of arm speed. It's really going to help you develop the ideal motion. Practice it, but don't practice it excessively. Practice it gradually so that your muscles and, and your range of motion starts to adapt and strengthen around this new movement. And, but really practice it frequently, regularly, so that you start to really feel like that old movement, whatever you used to do, is sort of gone. You just kind of kick it out and it's gone. And you wonder even how you used that motion before you learned this one. So really practice it this way and really exaggerate that throwing the racket over the top and having the arm come down slowly, okay? The motion in, now is gonna change from a forward towards the target motion to an upward swing up and out rather than forward towards your target. And we'll get into that a little bit more later as well. Next up, we're gonna work on the other half of the serve. And that is really getting the ball in the proper place and getting the proper balance. Those are keys. In fact, the serve is more about that once you have the motion than anything else. Because once you have the motion down, the motion will only adapt to a poorly placed ball or a poor balance that you have. So we're gonna work on how to develop a good balance. And what you wanna get in the serve, and this is one of the other things that makes the serve difficult, is that we're trying to generate power over our head, which is something we don't do in everyday life in many activities. And we're also trying to get into a rhythm of sorts because we're starting from a stationary position. So it can feel very difficult to generate power because we're standing here in a stationary position and we're trying to get power over our head. So we have to learn how to create a rhythm. And believe it or not, that rhythm's gonna start with the routine that you start your serve with. So what I want you to do is when you set up to serve, I want you to have the ball and, and throw to the racket. That's where I love to have it because my hands feel like they're a comfortable distance apart. This would be awkward. This would be awkward. But when they're here, they're almost just where I'd naturally do most things with both hands. So I'm here. My left hand's got the ball in the racket. I've got my continental grip and my weight is just slightly back. And what we're gonna do is go through a routine here where you're trying to get a flow of movement that will lead you into the serve and actually simulate somewhat of the serve itself. So I'm here on the back foot. I'm gonna let my hands fall away, like I'm entering the serve, but I, my hand's gonna go out, my left hand's gonna go out, it's gonna release the ball. And now I'm just trying to practice my tempo, nice, slow, and easy, and get the ball to come back to my hand. And then I'm gonna put the ball back in my hand, and my weight is forward. So once the ball leaves my hand, my back heel's gonna rise, Ball gets in my hand, my heel's gonna go down. Ball out of the hand, heel rises, ball in the hand, heel down. So the routine is meant to get you into the flow of serving. So if you just come up to the line and, and stand in a stationary position, don't have a routine established, it will feel very awkward to figure out how to enter into the serve naturally and comfortably. So the routine, and this is why you see all the pros do it, is they're trying to get a feel for how to enter the serve. So as an example, I'm in my ready position to serve, and can you tell whether I'm gonna go into my serve or into my routine? And then I love when you do this exercise where you feel like you just practice skill for going from routine to routine. And I think three to five bounces is ideal. Back foot, heel rises, front foot, ball in hand, heel down. And if you watch the pros, they're literally doing all of this. When they're bouncing the ball, the back heel's in the air. Once the ball gets in the hand, the heel goes down. And this is really how I'm going to start my serve. Here we go. And then this time, it's going to look like I'm going into my routine. But this time I went up. Okay. So how you start your routine, the feel you get into your routine, actually feeds right into how you're going to start your serve. So you feel like you've got motion. You feel like you've, you've got rhythm and you've got a flow of movement that's going to help entering into the serve 
much more comfortable for you and more natural. And there's a couple of different styles. You know, uh, Roger Federer, for example, was more of a rock back style where he'd be on the front foot when he reset his hands and he'd put the heel down and rock back to start his serve. So he'd move from here into this area to serve, okay? And then we have servers like Rafael Nadal. And Rafael Nadal, he would do his routine and he would sit back and he would toss the ball off his back foot and a sit back, okay? So there are different styles and you have to experiment with that. The one I think gives better rhythm, at least in the beginning, is the rock back because there's a little more motion. If I come back and sit on the back foot, I've kind of stalled and then it's kind of an awkward thing to, to get into the serve. So maybe start with your rock back like this. Heel goes down, body comes back, and then you toss from there. I think that's going to be easier. And start with that and then you can experiment and discover your own style later. Okay. Next up, you're going to have to get yourself into what's called the balancer trophy position. So once the ball exits the hand, just like in the routine, when the ball exited my hand, the back heel came off the court. Ball in the hand, heels down, heel stays down until I release the ball, and then the heel rises again. And now I'm into my balance trophy position. Now getting into the balance trophy position has four easy steps. Okay, I'm standing here just having a conversation, normal and natural. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bend my back leg so that my heel comes off the ground. Okay, then I'm going to flex my left knee a little bit. Then I'm going to make a straight line with my left and I'm going to make an L with my right. And this is a good four step process to getting into the balance trophy position. One, two, three, four and I'm in a pretty good position here, okay? My weight is evenly distributed over both feet. My back heel is risen because in this position, my right hip is gonna be a little lower. I'm gonna have a little more knee flex here on my right leg. You can see it here. This is where you see virtually every pro in this type of a position. And the back heel is gonna be up a little higher than the front. And I'm in this, somewhere in this position here. And this is what you wanna really work on getting into. The balance trophy position is a, is a position that you don't spend much time in, but it's a place where you feel that you've loaded in to power so you can deliver your power upward into your serve. Very, very important that you understand what the trophy position is and how to get into the trophy balance position. Now, the trophy balance position I just showed you was what's called a platform stance. And a platform stance is where you set your feet and you leave your feet stationary throughout the serve until you've hit the ball and then your momentum takes you out of that stance. There's also what's called a pinpoint stance. And that's just simply where once you've released the ball, the back foot's gonna come up and join the front foot. My recommendation is while you're learning skills and developing your serve, I would not even move the feet. I would stick around, stick right into the platform stance, stay right there and just stay still and play your platform because the pinpoint introduces just another movement, another motion, another thing that you have to time and coordinate, and it makes your serve a little bit more complicated. So when you're isolating drills and skills, like working on your motion, working on your trophy position, and so forth, keep your feet still, okay? It's gonna be much easier for you to discover how to get into a trophy position and a balance by not moving that back foot. And later on, if you discover that you're more of a pinpoint player and it helps you load in and get more of a rhythm up into the ball, then you can become a pinpoint server. But during the developmental stages, stick to the platform. Next up is the all important ball placement. And this is really the hardest part of the serve because you're doing the most precise thing with the least coordinated hand. And it takes a lot, a lot of practice, but there's a couple of key things to placing the ball accurately that'll help you here. And we're gonna get right into those. First of all, Minimize your body movement while you're tossing. Just imagine you're trying to place the ball with accuracy, but you're busy moving. How are you gonna control the ball? So if you watch most servers, most high performance servers, you're gonna see that they come to the back foot and put the weight a little bit more on the back foot. And this is a little bit of a counterbalance. The weight a little bit more on the back foot holds you steady and counterbalances this movement, okay? So it helps you stay steady through the phase of tossing until the ball leaves your hand. During this phase, you'd preferably stay as quiet as you can and just isolate the using the, the, for me, the left shoulder to lift the ball, okay? Very, very important. When you're tossing, make sure that you have the ball on the pads of your fingers. We don't want it in the palm, 
so it rolls out of your hand and we don't want it on the tips okay because you're not going to be able to control the release and, and, and really have control of the ball so the pads being the last portion of your fingers okay there's two ways you can hold the ball and, and raise the ball you can raise it with a palm up style okay and you can raise it with a palm side style the palm up style, players struggle with a little bit of a wrist flip here, and sometimes even a little bit of an elbow movement. So you really have to focus on isolating the lift from the shoulder and keep everything below the shoulder nice and still, okay? The palm side style, just think about holding a glass of water, and then as you come up to the point of release, it's, it, with this, it feels like it's less likely to have hinging or flicking in it. And as you come up to the point of release, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, your fingers are just gonna open and expand away and that's gonna help you control the ball. With the palm side, probably less inclined to get spin on the ball, less inclined to have wrist action in there. But again, this is more of a style for you individually, and you need to, through practice, figure out which one you're more comfortable with. When you do the palm up style, it rotates your shoulder out into a little bit more of an awkward position. I just feel more comfortable with my palm side. My shoulder just feels like it's in a more natural position to control this all-important action to place the ball up. Next up, where's the point of release? And this is important because we want to release the ball in a consistent area so that it will stay in a consistent area up above us. And the ideal point of release is just about forehead to the top of the head. Anything below that, the ball is going to drift away from you. Anything past that, more than likely the ball is going to fade behind you. So you've got a point of release that's just about at the top of the head. So that's going to help you understand exactly where you want to let the ball go. And the other thing that's going to help you is, and you'll see this is really important, is that when you're serving, you look over at the target to serve, you go into your routine, and some players will do this. They'll actually look at the ball, and they'll follow the ball like this. Okay, not a good idea, because that introduces what? Movement of the head, movement of the body, and so forth. Other players, you'll see, will do the routine, and they'll look up in the sky and toss the ball and look for it up there. And that's probably a better choice than the first one, because you can do that and not, not have a lot of action. But if you're having trouble releasing the ball in the right area, you'll see that a lot of players will go from here, and when they come to the back foot, the eyes will shift to the point of release, and they'll wait right there until they see the ball there. Okay, right here, release, perfect toss. So once you understand where the point of release is, you can use your eyes to help you. What we don't want to do, for example, we see some players do this, they'll, they'll do their bouncing and they'll look at the ball, and then their eyes will just track with the ball like this. So the head will be very active as the arm rises, the head's active and moving. Make sure you're not doing that, okay? Also, we see other players who will look up in the sky and then try to toss the ball to where their eyes are. And that's probably a better option, although it's maybe not ideal. If you're having trouble with consistency in where you're releasing the ball, use your eyes. And you'll see a lot of pros will do this. You'll see them do their movement, they'll look at the court, and then when they shift back and put their heel down and the arm begins to rise, the eyes will shift to the point of release and wait for the, the ball to get into the line of sight. And then they will release the ball from there. Come to the back foot, look for it, and then release it. And that'll give you a lot more consistency in releasing the ball in the right area and therefore getting more consistency in your ball placement. So now that you have the idea of how you want to enter to the serve and how you want to place the ball, the skill of actually placing the ball, how high do we want the ball to be and where do we want it to be? And there's a lot of different topics on this. And some coaches uh, really encourage trying to hit the ball at the apex of the toss. Other coaches have different ideas. Mine is you got to get the ball up there higher, okay? And there's example after example of, of high performance players who get the ball 24 inches, even 30 inches above the point of contact. And particularly during the developmental phases, I encourage you to get the ball up. But make sure you're not just trying to toss it to the height of your contact point. It really is difficult to develop your skills when you do that. So think about getting the ball up above that area so you've got time to see the ball up there, go through your range of motion, and, and really develop your skills and play the ball. So we want to get that ball up. Give yourself some time, okay? I do detail this more, uh, but, but in today's lesson, that's all you need to know is give yourself maybe 24 inches above the contact point so you've got time to really work on your skills and get to the contact point. Location of the ball. We want to get that ball inside the shoulder. We want to get that ball inside the shoulder so the racket is inside your hand. 
Contrary to common belief, we do not want to overextend or reach as high as we possibly can and have the racket above our hand because this is weak. This, this is actually locking my shoulder up. What I want to do is have a comfortable extension and have the racket on a slight angle inside my hand where the racket can rotate through and create that beautiful racket action that we're looking for with the continental grip and a professional serving motion. Now, there are different locations, subtle changes in your ball toss location that you can create different effects on, such as top spin, kick serves, slice serves, and so forth. But for now, when you're developing these skills, I would work on placing the ball in the same area every time. We wouldn't worry about spins right now or even placement. We're, worried, we're concerned with the skill of repetition, getting the right idea on your serve. Now, as far as where it should be from a side angle view, it should be just slightly in front of you. I've just got a slight lean in right in here. I don't want to be out here because now I'm in a position where I can only push the ball or come down on the ball. And obviously I don't want it behind me either. So I want to get a good position here where the racket's coming into a slight angle. Now you can see from this position also, and this is critical, look where my head is. If you're one of those servers who's got your head behind your shoulder and behind contact, this is a very weak position where in fact you want to have your head tilting slightly away from your shoulder here and be in an angle here where you can look up at the ball, but your head is actually in front of the shoulder. And you can see this is where you can bring your shoulder through right up next to your ear, right up here, and generate a lot of power in your swing. Now you have a perspective on the fundamental principles and concepts and movements that you need to develop to create this new serve. So what I recommend you do now is a lot of rehearsing. And that means that you don't need to hit a ball. What you really need to do is practice the idea of serving, and you can do this in front of a mirror and look at it. You can film it and just keep working on the feel of how you have a great rhythm and you accelerate and practice that as much as possible. Because if you put the ball in there and you're playing on the court, you're more inclined for this movement to break down because you want to go back to what you trust. And right now, you probably don't trust this. So just keep working on it, blending it together. And then once you put the ball in there, you know, if, the, if I toss the ball up and the ball's not in the right area, resist the temptation to play it because that just breaks the movement that you're developing. So as an example, I'll toss the ball poorly. And there's a couple of things I could do. If I toss the ball poorly, I could just stall here and wait, wait and get in my trophy position and then place the ball and catch the ball again. Or I could just proceed to say, you know what, I'm going to practice it as if the ball's in the perfect spot. So now I'm going to just place the ball up. It's not there, but I'm going to swing and really practice the serve. And that sequence is really, really important that you get into the habit of practicing the right movement and then learning how to place the ball into the movement. If I get the ball in the right area, I play it. If I don't, I don't play it. Okay? or I just stall and check my balance, check my trophy position, and make sure I'm getting into a good position here, okay? And then if I place the ball in the right area, I'll play it, okay? And then keep working on that and resist the temptation to hit balls that are not within your strike zone, in, your, in the path of your swing. And this is the process you really need to go through, lots of repetition, don't worry about playing matches, and this is gonna help you make the transition from that low performing serve to the high performing serve that you seek. Thanks so much for watching today's lesson. And I hope that you'll take these concepts to the court and practice them. And if you really work on these skills and abandon playing matches, you're gonna be able to transition from that lower performing serve to the high performing serve that you seek that's gonna get your game to higher and higher levels. Remember for most tennis players, their games either rise or fall with serving performance. So make the serve your leading shot in your game and really get out and practice. Thanks for watching today's video. Please give us a like, leave your comments down below. I'll respond to all comments and subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. We've got a lot more coming here at Performance Plus Tennis. And then finally, if you wanna get more, more instruction, more support on developing your serve, click in the link in the description down below and get access to the five principles that you really need to build and understand to get that professional quality serve. Thanks so much for watching today's video and we'll see you in the next lesson.